Welcome, everyone, to our midweek strategy. My name is Steve Vetterl. Today is the 14th of July. And again, thank you for taking the time out of everybody's potentially busy day to listen to me ramble on the mic. Um, do me a favor, if you would, please, on the in the queue. Um, verify that you guys can hear me okay and that you can see my screen okay. Uh, because I'm actually going to I'm broadcasting remotely today. So I want to make sure we got everybody <clears throat> hearing me okay, seeing my screen okay. It's like we're all done. And for those just joining us, this is Tuesday the 5th. This is the midweek strategy call. Although it's kind of surprising all the news events this week. Well, they haven't had a lot of craziness in Forex. So... Um, not going to be any Q and A today, okay? So I've got, a, I see a couple of questions in Q and A. Maybe I can address those. But if you guys have any questions, I want you to, um, you know, just send me an email. Let's go through the risk disclosures real quick. Trading the foreign exchange market carries high risk and may not be suitable for all investors. Trading on margin and utilizing leverage can carry an even higher level of risk that can lead to a complete loss of investment funds. So before deciding to trade the foreign exchange market any using our soft alerts for that matter trading anything should carefully consider in doing your due diligence personal objectives whether or not you can afford to lose the money so let's go over to the next slide so really if you're sharing any results using alexander einstein or iris which is awesome um which you really can only do in the Facebook groups, please do not use the term company recommended settings. These are just settings that I share. Um, so if, if you need to use somebody's name, you can put down Steve. <laughs> so Avoria Prime does not have any recommended settings. We are not a financial advisory firm. We just license software that users can use however they want at their own risk. Um, software does come with default settings upon initial setup, which your users have the ability to customize the settings however they want. Um, they can make changes to them. It's really the purpose of these calls. If this is the first time you're joining this call, um, I am the risk manager for the firm. I'm a Series 65 licensed RIA here in SoCal. Uh, I spend most of my time running a, a client, a, a book of clients, and <clears throat> taking care of a lot of my colleagues' clients. So it's primarily what I do most of the time, trading so forth. Um, let's go to the third slide. So if anybody needs to take down my email address, um, you can send me an email since I'm not as engaged in Q&A today because I'm actually traveling out on the road, actually stuck in a little bit of traffic here in the 405 North right outside of LA. Um, it's sfederaldavoriaprime.com. So let's go to, let's shift over to the Forex. Okay, so this is the Forex calendar. I, I mentioned this on Saturday. We have a fair amount of news stories um, for the week. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen this before, it's just forexfactory.com. Make sure the date is the current week that you see here. And I actually filter out the news events with the exception. It has a large or high impact potential on the Forex market. So we have literally bank of whatever country you want to mention, a lot of them in the Eurozone, certainly in Canada, in the U.S. We've had a lot of... Um, news coming out this week. So <clears throat> I said I thought it could be a fairly treacherous week in terms of the currency markets. It's actually kind of been really slow so far. I mean, we're only two days into the week, obviously, but um, just taking a look at the currency markets. One thing I did want to point out of note, and again, if you guys can't see the screen or something's not showing up, just make sure you, you ping me here in the chat window. So going over to the Forex, let me switch over to the daily chart. Just to tell you, when you're doing these calls on the fly, it really makes you appreciate having multiple screens of software like I do in my office. Okay, so what you should see on the screen is the Euro-US dollar. This is one of the main ring currency pairs that we trade of the 25 that are out there. Um, this has the most volume. Um, in a given day, the most participation among institution and retail traders. So I always start my analysis here first. If you're trading a different ring, you still want to take a look at this, in my opinion. Note where we are. This is a 
by strictly looking at candles on this chart. Um, we are near a very big level at the 114, which notice we just ticked up to today of resistance. This has been a big area of resistance. I can promise you if we get above this area and we hold, especially on a daily time frame, there's a lot of pockets of stops that are up there in this 114 to 115 area. So from a technical analysis perspective, essentially this is what this type of research is called. Um, you know, we have a pretty big um, area that just know we've come up against now essentially a fourth time. So as you can see way back in July of last year, we touched it, had a big we went up and had a huge reversal that tells you with some serious people out there in institutional land that was defending this area, right? Because we came up against it and then just ripped down. Not a lot can be read into this because it was during pandemic, it's much crazier movements in the market. But now, essentially, this is a fourth time that we're up against it. Will we break it? I don't know. Um, it looks to see that we may, if there's some volume that comes in, um, it certainly could be related to some of the news that comes out in the next couple of days, but it's going to be very interesting for the first time in quite a while since March, essentially, um, that we're up in a big area. So if we do break through this and we just get a rip above this, which is entirely possible, if the um, the congressional um, uh, folks and the House uh, are back in session on the 20th of July here in the United States. You know, if there is a hint or the market catches some sort of whiff that bailout number two, you know, whatever they decide to call that package, um, we certainly could burst above this and start testing this whole 14 to 15 area, which is a big area. So you can always drop this down onto a weekly chart. But just wanted to mention this of note. So we go back to Forex land. Um, again, this is a little bit more of a technical analysis oriented call. Um, the traders, uh, I should say the developers are trading this week. Um, so I mentioned that on Saturday. And again, for anybody that's new, um, I highly recommend that you go into the back office uh, of Avoria, <clears throat> click on the product, which is on your dashboard that you're trading, whether it's one of the three. And then underneath, you'll see a whole onboarding set of videos that goes in detail of how to set up the software. We're obviously adding videos uh, that Tyler's worked real hard on to shoot about different types of settings. We'll see the trade um, and telegram channels that I highly su su suggest you subscribe to, both myself and Jesse, uh, who's been doing an amazing amount of research. He's been posting to his channel. It's been great stuff. You know, he, tra he trades exclusively the GBP NZD ring. Um, if you're not familiar with any of this, uh, I would start with our um, May 30th Saturday call, which again can be accessed via the dashboard. Click on your product or the resources tab and you can get down and see all of the May 30th call where we um high volatility settings, which we're running, <clears throat> which is nothing more than just flipping the position size multiplier in the range. <clears throat> so let me just uh, jump into Q&A here real quick, see if anything stands out, because I have very limited time today. Okay, all good. And let me shift over real quick. Okay, so this is the Einstein MyFX book um, for our 25K um, large account. This is a real account denominated in euros. <clears throat> it's actually had a pretty decent week so far. We're up about a half a percentage point. Um, notice this account established um, back towards the end of March during all the craziness that took place with this pandemic. And again, this is really just going out to those of you in the audience that are fairly new to this. Um, but we're running the high volatility settings on the two live accounts that we show. 
we have the one account um, hooked up. Essentially, this is trading the. Um, let me just scroll down here. I wanted to see the summary. So we're trading the Euro JPY USD ring. This is a much more diversified account. We're beginning to build some pretty decent data. So we've got 14 trades open currently. Um, we're in about um, 374 hours in drawdown. So that's certainly acceptable. That's great stuff. If you look at the history, we've got about 1,219 trades. So we're beginning to get towards a larger data set. Notice I pay most attention to hopefully a large and growing data set. And then secondarily, I pay attention to which particular pairs are profiting the most. One's successful and one's not. Also, I pay attention to the win rates. So let's just take a look at the summary here. So as you can see, the biggest profit is coming from the Euro US dollar. Oops, I tell you, it's really hard to get a decent click here when you're bouncing around in a car, huh? Yeah, I'm not going to be able to click on this. So as you'll be able to see in the middle of the screen, the Euro US dollar, it's in the middle there, it has the highest profit. It's way higher than the uh, USD JPY that you can see below, which has just essentially 113 euros of profit so far this year. You know, be looking for that to maybe pick up some steam. Um, <clears throat> so I get a lot of questions as to, you know, just because the profit over this very short period of time that we've been running this account um, is only $113. And it's really not that much in relation to the other two of the three ring pair that we trade. Um, should I get rid of it? And my answer is always you want to usually trade a ring as long as you've got a $3,000 live something in that area in demo. Um, you probably want to start off trading this ring. <clears throat> I probably, and as many cases, I dissuade a lot of people from, you know, getting into some of the craziness without running a demo, obviously, before you trade a live account. Um, as much as I love the GBP NZD and the ring that's related to that, that Jesse trades, you really need to know what you're doing and you have to be exceptionally plugged into his channel, in my opinion. Um, in order to be successful trading this pair because Jesse's constantly making adjustments to that, okay? Whereas with our accounts, um, we'd prefer to be a little more diversified. We prefer to be on the high volatility settings, which can withstand a lot more volatility per pair. So I actually took a closer look at a fairly customized calculator that uh, our expert and, and master developer, uh, Patrick, has put together. Um, and it really has the ability with uh, the 25K account, which we're trading a lot size of 0 0.01 per 3K. Um, it has the ability to withstand between 850 and 900 pips uh, movement. And that's one reason with this particular account um, that we've chosen but still bananas in the marketplace, although thank God we're seeing a much calmer version of that this week. Um, it has this in order. So... That's really kind of all I wanted to talk about. Um, I would highly suggest, since I'm not going to cover a lot of stuff today, if you guys have, um, you know, problems with anything, questions, you know, you certainly can always go into the Zen desk in the back office and open up your ticket. But what I've encouraged and spent most of my time on is just making sure that everybody that has a huge group underneath them is finding some way, if it's in a different language, to translate. <clears throat> what I'm saying, or to at least put it together in, in like a quick, you know, cliff notes version and get it out to your teams. So I think that's, what's most important is, is just getting the communication out of what's going on. I'm still just completely surprised every day of emails I get and people are just going, they've got completely wacky settings. I mean, one guy sent me an email last week. It just went in with a huge live account trading GBP NZD. He wasn't even subscribed to Jesse's channel just because somebody told him to like plugged it in. And I was just like, my God, who brought you in? They need to be lamb based to get them on the phone so I could torture them a little. So, <clears throat> cause it's all just going to make these accounts much safer for us. So <clears throat> getting off the exit and uh, coming into a lot of traffic here on Wilshire Boulevard. So 
I'm going to sign off here before I lose this call. If anybody's got any questions or anything, you can send me an email, um, follow up on anything that's going on in the market, but you know, do yourselves a favor. If you haven't um, run a demo account first, before you go live. Other than that, I will see everybody Saturday morning. Have a great trading week and certainly may the trades be with you. I think so.